in this video, I am going to talk about four games. Of course, the new Assassin's Creed Valhalla is going to be a talking point, and the new Immortals Phoenix Rising. And I feel like I have a lot of things to say about both of these games, Valhalla and Immortals, both being Ubisoft games that are new. But I'm also gonna touch in on some other games, and that is uh, Wonderful 101, and actually touch in a bit on an older game that I played last year. But I have some new things to say about it. So, as a first announcement, I was in a podcast called Spelledosna, and that is a Norwegian podcast, so that is for all my Norwegian followers, or if you want to hear a weird language. Other than that, I hope you want to like and subscribe to my channel. Um, I like to sit here and talk about video games, so that is what you can expect if you subscribe. Now the first game that I'm going to talk about today is actually a sponsored section by Platinum Games. Now Platinum Games is known for the Bayonetta series, Nier Automata. They are also known for the wonderful and amazing Astral Chain that I loved. But they have made other games as well. And this game is Wonderful 101, a game by some of the original people behind the beautiful Joe series. If anyone remembers that, I remember it vividly from the GameCube era, actually. Wonderful 101 was at its time of release a Wii U exclusive game that now has gotten a Switch remaster. In this game you play as a horde of superheroes, basically, in a isometric perspective, and you collect and save citizens all around the place, and then you eventually increase the size of the army that you are controlling, and you can morph them all to use special powers, and you can make bridges, like you can morph these people into a sword or a gun, or a <laughs> actual fist, also to solve a lot of puzzles. If I am to describe this game with one word, actually there's two words, I would say it is action-packed. From the start you are thrown into the action and it has a lot of things to collect and unlock. In a way it feels like in hack and slash with some of the levels and how, how you play the game, how the gameplay is. I actually enjoy seeing Wii U titles getting a remastered version for the Switch, so I think this is nice. This game is probably for Bayonetta fans, or even like Pikmin fans, or just fans of the action-adventure genre. So you know, if you're interested in this game, you can check out the links in my description box. And you can also play the demo right now, which is called Wonder Size Cadet Demo. It's out right now and it is featuring Wonder Bayonetta, like actual Bayonetta from the Bayonetta series. And this demo is packed with content where you can play the entire prologue and a total of about two hours gameplay and wonderful 101 is on sale right now as well even better you can also continue your demo save final over to the full game and it also has multiplayer so you know thanks for sponsoring this video and check out the links down below Now it is time to talk about Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I have been super excited for this game because I am sort of a new fan of the Assassin's Creed series because I discovered Origins, which was my, you know, true sort of... <laughs> I'm so good with explaining things. Uh, experience with an Assassin's Creed game. Origins was everything for me earlier this year. So yeah, I was naturally really excited for Valhalla. Also because Norway is in it. Norway. My, you know, Norway. I'm from Norway. And so, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is developed by Ubisoft Montreal, because Ubisoft has a bunch of studios across, you know, everywhere. But this is Ubisoft Montreal. And I want to say my first impression with Valhalla is that you start in Norway, and you know, I just had a smile on my face for the entire first part of the game, because I am in Norway, and I think and I feel like they have nailed how Norway looks and feels, if it's winter time. It's not like that all the time in Norway. And besides, I have not been to these specific regions where you are playing in the game in Norway, like over a thousand years ago. I've never been down there, but Norway is basically really mountainy and uh, oceany. So yeah, I, you get the Norway feel. I got it, so you know, it's legit. I'm just really proud to see Norway made its way into an Assassin's Creed game. And another first impression is that <laughs> the animations, okay. A small moment dedicated to the snow animation. I found it so satisfying that I went and walked in the snow, I don't know, for a good 10, 20 minutes. Because I just love how the animations are for the snow. Assassin's Creed Origins had something similar with the sand in the desert in Egypt. 
this is a thing that I did, probably something no one else did, but in Assassin's Creed Origins, and I'm going way off topic, there was an outfit where you were bare feet. And I walked in the sand and I did exactly the same thing, just appreciating the walking animation and seeing how snow or sand changes when you walk on it. I don't know what to say. Does anyone else do this? But it's, I guess it's just an appreciation for how far video games has come, I guess. Okay, so the first impression of Assassin's Creed Valhalla is obviously really good. I'm loving the, the first part of Norway and all of that, but quite soon into my playthrough I noticed a few things that I was missing from Origins and Odyssey, and that is the bird cannot track enemies uh, anymore. I really miss that. I don't understand why they took that out. Maybe it made the game too easy. But there was also another thing that I was missing, and that is, you know, when you use the when you use the ability that you usually have in an Assassin's Creed game, where you get to highlight uh, all the loot that is around you. In Origins and in Odyssey, when you did that ability, you got small pointers, you know, small lines and a bit of pling plong to the nearby loot. And they have cut that out. Why? It was so satisfying. So that is also a thing that I miss. So these two things I would like to have changed with the entire Valhalla. I'm sure they had their reasons, but I don't understand it. Another thing is that the game can feel overwhelmingly big because there are an enormous amount of places and most of them are pretty samey. When I was walking on the mountains in Norway, took my time, sweet time in Norway, there wasn't a lot of things to come across and I ended up in the end just walking from obvious chest area to next chest area to the next mystery area. That is the yellow and blue-ish things on the map. So there was just no reason to explore further than that. However, uncovering the map and getting all the wealth and mysteries and artifacts, as you can see here, to get those bars filled up on the map screen, that is undoubtedly satisfying. And to Valhalla's defense, this game can last you for a very long time. And a lot of people enjoy and appreciate that, that games are long and it's gonna last you for a few months. In my case, probably a year. <laughs> so I wanna say that Valhalla is a winner if you like the core gameplay. The sneaking and the range or melee, you know, the formula. Because there are a lot of clear the area, clear the area, clear the fort. It's basically the gameplay of the entire game, I wanna say. I do enjoy the skill tree. I've definitely been playing around with the skill tree. But another thing that I would change is that I would like the map to have actual colors, but that is me and I always want to have, you know, a good map in my video games with <laughs> colors so that you can see the sort of terrain and all of the things around. But what can I say? England is beautiful. It's actually kind of breathtaking. It's really beautiful. But I kind of wish that I played this on the PS5 instead of the PS4. I don't have a PS5 yet. And I also feel like the loading times are a bit on the longer side. And the camp building. I like that. That is a welcome addition for me. I really enjoy camp building. It's just a small thing you can do in the game. You know, basically get materials and build your camp up. I mean. But I want to say that so far with Valhalla, I'm still loving Origins more, but we're getting there, I mean, I'm gonna play this game more. Now another Ubisoft game that I have played a tiny bit, so I have a first impression for you guys. No spoilers, just a first impression, and that is for Immortals Phoenix Rising, a upcoming game for actually the Switch, PS4, and you know, all the consoles and PC. And you know what? Actually, I'm playing this on PC this time. When you start off Immortals Phoenix Rising, you can choose the difficulty. Story, easy, normal, hard, etc. Guess which one I chose. <laughs> Then you go through some simple character customization. You can choose to be a boy or a girl. But your name is Phoenix either way. I think the cutscenes are gorgeous and I think the animations are great and I like the voice acting and I like the setting. Mm, so far everything is like, I like everything. It is looking good so far. And this game is kind of funny too. Well, that's the end of Phoenix. Perfectly passable storytelling. I won't lie, there were moments that dragged, but you really got me with that ending. 
immediately I'm getting an Assassin's Creed Odyssey vibe. Not only from the culture and the setting that they chose to go with in this game, which is very similar, in my opinion, to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Not only that, but I feel like it controls like that with the climbing and just the general vibe and feel. So I think it's like a more cartoony approach to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I am loving how I can reveal chests and stuff around me when I'm on a clifftop. Also reminds me of the Assassin's Creed bird marking. Performance seems really smooth as butter. It's really good on PC. Smooth as butter. So I feel like this is my Genshin Impact fix. Now that I've done everything in Genshin Impact. Um, because it's sorta like that game. I can draw a bunch of similarities between Genshin Impact and this game. I mean with the gliding, the climbing, kind of the art style. And the open worldness and the colorfulness. So this is my <laughs> Genshin 2.0. So they are kind of similar. The only problem is that I still have the muscle memories in my hands, I mean, with the controls to Genshin. So, you know, sometimes when I'm playing Immortals, I think I'm gonna, you know, open my wings and glide, but I end up dying <laughs> because I'm hitting the Genshin button to glide. There's almost no loading times on PC. They basically feel very instant. So if you hate loading screens, play this on the PC. So these are my quick first impressions of the game. And that is only a first impression for the first section sections of the game. Uh, very basic stuff. And I want to say that it is looking amazing and it is looking very promising. And I can't wait to play this game actually more. So, you know, this has a green light from me. I'm really excited to try this game more. So yeah, look out for this game. Now to end up this video, I actually have to just touch in on an older, older game. <laughs> it's not really that old, but older. And that is actually Atelier Raisa. I just randomly and naturally decided to go back to Atelier Raisa. It's been some time since I played it last, have to admit. But I was like, wonder how Atelier Raisa is doing. You know, I want to go back in there sort of thing. And I did. And I don't know, it was like... It was like the game was new to me all over again. Sometimes video games can do that to you if you leave it for, I don't know, a year or even just six months and then you go back to it and it's like, I don't remember this game being this beautiful. <laughs> and that was what happened when I went back to Atelier Rice. I was like, has this game always been this beautiful? This sharp? And I was playing in handheld first, first of all, and then I played docked just to, you know, double check. But in handheld, I was like, I don't remember it looking this sharp and crisp and maybe it's just that I don't remember how beautiful it was but it is um, it was shocking sort of if I didn't know any better I would say they have done something with the graphics but I don't think they have so I think it's only me but either way it was like shockingly beautiful so I, I ended up playing it uh, a bunch more and continuing actually the story where I left off um, last time I picked it up and suddenly I found myself immersed in this game all of a sudden and it's a game that I reviewed last year so that was kind of interesting and funny and of course I still recommend Atelier Raisa to everyone that is watching and probably a lot of people are new to my channel compared to when I talked about it last time because I did a review of this game and uh, and I really enjoyed it I think it was last year so it was fun going back to it and actually I recommend going back to it because <laughs> Maybe you will get the same feeling that I did, like, oh my god, this is shockingly beautiful and it's fun all over again. And, just to have it said, Atelier Raisa 2 has been announced and it is looking amazing. Just like, everything that was good with Atelier Raisa and then some. Some new features, you can swim now underwater. And I'm so happy and proud of Atelier, like, in general, the entire series, because it seems like they are picking up steam and being more popular um, every year as the years go by and they are getting bigger budgets for their games and I feel like they really deserve it because they are onto something. The Atelier games are like this, how do I describe this genre? It's a JRPG where you also have item management and material collecting and crafting a battle system and story and music and graphics and exploring and you know, the Atelier series is a really solid series.
Okay, so this video is probably too long already, but I just had to talk about some video games today because I'm I'm feeling good today. I wanted to come and talk about some games and it has been fun. And if you think it has been fun, uh, you can hit a like on my video or even subscribe if you're new, but you, you know that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later.